In this video, I'm going to introduce you to my Lord and Savior of black and white film developing in the form of Kodak Extol. So what is Kodak Extol? Well, it's a box speed, fine grained, general purpose black and white film developer. Now box speed means it maintains the full film speed. Some developers are speed reducing developers and some developers are speed increasing developers, but Extol is a box speed developer, so it will maintain the correct ISO of the film once you develop it. Now a fine grain developer means that it greatly reduces the appearance of grains on the film. And this means that your images come out looking a lot less grainy and a lot smoother overall. And Extol does all of this while also maintaining a very high sharpness on your film. So it doesn't blur or soften the image to reduce the grain. And that is one of the greatest strengths of this developer. Now when you buy Extol, it comes as a two part powder developer and is designed to be mixed up to a five liter amount. Now I know mixing up five liters of developer sounds like a massive hassle and it is a little bit, but when you get used to using the developer and set up a system for it, which we'll get to later, five liters of developer is not an issue to work with at all. But if you want to work with a smaller amount, Adox's X-T3, which is an x clone, is available in one liter sizes. So you can buy that, try out the developer, see if you like it, and then buy more X-T3 in Adox's five liter size, or switch over to Kodak x in its five liter size. x is actually an ascorbic acid based developer. And what this means is that the developer is actually you know, relative to some of the other developers out there like Rodinal, it is a particularly mild developer, which is very easy to use and actually very easy to handle. It's also significantly more environmentally friendly overall. It doesn't have as much harsh chemicals in it as something like Rodinal or HC110. So to get started with Extol, we need to dissolve all of this powder into five liters of water. Now, when I mix up my Extol, I actually use deionized water, but distilled water will also work as well. And the reason you want deionized or distilled water instead of tap water is because you want to make sure that the water is relatively pure and there's no you know, minerals or rust or crap in the actual tap water in the solution because you're going to be storing this for a while and you don't want any contaminants getting in there and interfering with the actual Extol chemistry. So to get started, we're going to measure out four liters of deionized water and add that to a five liter container. And to that, we're going to add all of Extol part A. I would recommend wearing a you know, mask or something over your face because it does kind of kick up a little bit of dust and you don't want to breathe in this stuff. Then once part A is dissolved, we're going to add in all of part B and fully dissolve that into the solution as well. And once the part B is fully dissolved, we're going to make up the solution to the five liter mark. And that's it. Our Extol has now been mixed and is pretty much ready for use. Extol will, without oxygen, last for a quite a long time. Kodak says it will last at least six months, but I've actually been using my replenisher solution for about a year now and it has lasted perfectly since I mixed it. And that is because I stored it in one of these. Now this thing, in case you're wondering, is actually a wine box for home brewing. So if you go onto like a home brewing website, you can find these for sale. Obviously I bought a five liter size. And if we open it up, we can see that inside, we just have a bag of liquid. And the advantage of using this is that this bag is completely airtight because wine will spoil when exposed to oxygen. So it's an airtight bag that I filled with the x -tol, and then I just squeezed out all the air and fitted the tap. And that means that whenever I need replenisher, which we'll get to later, I can just pour out x out of the tap and no air gets in and it maintains the solution in a perfect air-free environment. So I think when it comes to storing x the homebrew wine box is by far the best solution. Although another solution I do employ because I use the replenishment process is to store it in amber glass bottles. Now glass bottles are impervious to oxygen, so they won't let any air in and it will maintain the solution for a really long time as well. 
Now, when it comes to using this fresh Xtile stock solution that we've just mixed up, there are three main methods. The first is just to use the stock solution straight up and develop with that. So you just measure out how much you need, pour it into a tank, develop your film, and then dump it. But you can actually extend the developer a little bit by using that developer one more time and extending developer time, I believe somewhere around 20% to compensate for the weakened developer. The second option is the one plus one dilution. So this is where you would measure out half as much solution you would need in Xtol, dilute that one plus one with water to make up to the full amount, and then you would develop your film in that. And then once that is used up, you just throw it out straight away and it cannot be reused. The third method is, in my opinion, by far the best method, and that is the stock replenisher solution. And the reason this is the best method is because it is both the most convenient, but it is also by far the cheapest method of developing and uses the least developer, while also compensating for different film sizes and does not waste any developer at all. So to give you some numbers on this, if you're developing a 35mm roll of film in a 250mm tank like this single roll Jobo tank here, when you're using a stock solution, you will only get about 20 rolls out of it before all the 5 litres is consumed. Now when it comes to the 1 plus 1 dilution, you'll actually only be able to develop about 40 rolls. So you'll get twice as many, which makes sense, you know, you're diluting it by half. But if you use the replenishing method, with a one liter working stock solution, you can actually get around 56 rolls of film out of this five liters before you run out. So the replenishing method is by far the best. So when it comes to using Xtal, I'm not gonna cover the stock solution or one plus one dilutions because they're pretty straightforward and are basic developing techniques. So what is the replenishing method? Well, in simple terms, the replenishing method is when you take a fixed amount of a developer and you continuously use that for developing your film each time. But every time you finish developing film, you add in a replenisher solution into this working solution and that will bring this working solution back up to full strength after each developing run. Now in the case of Xtol, this is really convenient to do because the replenishing solution and the working solution are the same. So to set ourselves up to start using the replenishing method, we first need to get a working solution sorted out. And to do that, we just take one liter of our five liter mixed solution and we pour it off into a one liter bottle. And we store that as our working stock solution. We then take the remaining four liters of solution and we store that away as our replenisher. Now, when it comes to developing with a replenishing method, it's actually quite a simple process. First step is to take our working solution and then measure out how much we need to develop with. So if I'm using this 250 mil tank with inversions, I will measure out in a graduate cylinder, 250 mil of developer. Now, when it comes to temperature, you do need to be a little careful here because your stock solution, which might not be at 20 degrees. So we need to measure its temperature and find out it might be at 22 degrees Celsius. So then we need to look up a time compensation chart for different developer temperatures. I use this really nice table from Ilford. And then I just take my stock solution time at 20 degrees, figure out what it is at 22 degrees. And then from there, I will just develop my film as normal. Now, when our film is fully developed and the time is up, we just take that developer, pour it back into the graduated cylinder we had it in earlier, and we'll put that graduated cylinder aside for later. And then we're going to continue with the rest of our black and white developing process by running a stop bath. And then we're going to fix our film and hang it up to dry as normal. So now that our film is hung up and drying, we're going to do the replenishment process. Now, the first step of this is that we need to measure out the correct amount of full strength replenisher from our replenisher solution. Now, Xtol in its data sheet states that for every roll of 35 millimeter film you develop, you need to add 70 mils of replenisher. So we'll take our wine box of solution and then we're going to measure out 70 mils into a small graduate cylinder. We're going to add that to a second graduate cylinder and then we're going to take our used developer solution 
and we're going to use it to make up the replenish solution to the original amount. And then we're going to take the replenish solution, add it back to our working stock solution to make it back up to its original wood litre. Now, as for the rest of the developer that's left over, that can just go down the sink. So now that we know what the replenishing method is and how simple it is, why would you want to use it? Well, the first reason is that you never have to mix up new solutions. All your solutions are pretty much ready to go. So you're not spending time faffing around getting water temperature correct. You're not dealing with measuring out exact amounts of, you know, HC110 and diluting it and getting all that ready to develop your film. You just measure out your working stock, take its temperature, figure out your time, and away you go. So it's much more convenient to just quickly develop a roll or two of film when you need to. Now the second major advantage of this method is that you're never wasting developer. Because you only replenish with 70 mil per roll of 35 mil film, you're never using more developer than you need to. So in this example, I was developing one roll of 35 mil film in a 250 mil tank and replenishing it with 70 mils. But if I was developing a single roll of 120 in a 500 ml tank, I still only replenish it with 70 ml of solution. And that is because 35 mm film and 120 film have about the same surface area. So that means that you're only ever using up 70 ml of solution at a time to develop a roll of film. But this also helps when I'm developing 4x5 film because if I want to develop two sheets of 4x5, I need to use this which is my Stearman Press 445 tank. Now this tank requires 475 ml of solution. But if I only have two sheets of film in here, I only need to replenish with 35 ml of my Extol replenisher. And that is because four sheets of 4x5 has about the surface area of a roll of 35 mm film. So if I'm only developing two sheets, I only need to use 35 ml of replenisher. So no matter what format, or how much solution you actually need to use to cover the film, you're only ever going to replenish based on the amount of film you develop. Now a more extreme example of this would be to develop six rolls of 120 film in this Jobo tank using 600 mil of Extol. Now in this case, because I'm developing six rolls at once, I would need to replenish using 420, nice, mils of solution in that 600 mils. So while we have you know, used up a lot of the developer, we are developing six rolls at once. And that is one of the really nice things of this process because you only use the amount of solution needed to develop the film and you're not being wasteful. Now, another nice thing is that you actually cannot over replenish Extol. And that is because the stock solution and the replenisher solution are exactly the same solution. So it doesn't matter how much replenisher you add to this, if you add stock to stock, you can't get more concentrated than the stock solution. And if you think about it, where did our working stock come from? It came from the five liters of you know, original replenisher solution or stock solution that we mixed up. So it doesn't matter how much of this we add to the one liter to make it up you will only ever get a stock solution at most. Now the counterpoint to that is it is entirely possible to under replenish the solution. So if you find that over time, your negatives are getting a little bit thinner as you're going along. So maybe each time you develop a roll, you actually need to add 80 ml of replenisher in order to keep the developer at full working strength. Now one word of warning, if you start researching the replenishment process with Xtal online, you're going to get a lot of crazy information about developer starters and seasoning the developer and you know, develop five or six roles in it first and then you start replenishing and you need to figure out all these developing times. When it comes to that information, just ignore it, okay? We're doing a stock solution replenishment here. We're not using a developer starter and we're not seasoning our developer. Now to explain those terms, a developer starter is a special chemical that you can buy where you actually add, you know, three, four mil of it to your working stock solution. And it effectively weakens the solution a little bit down. Now, the reason you would do this is so that you can over replenish and under replenish the solution to adjust the activity of developer to really fine tune your process. Now, the only people who really need to do this are major developing labs. And that is because 
they will use process control strips and you know a density measuring machine and they'll figure out their own developing times for the exact developing concentration that they have. Now the reason they actually lower the activity is because if they find that they've gone down a little too far they can actually overcompensate for it and undercompensate and really fine tune and perfectly control their process. Now when it comes to schmucks like us who develop at home all of that goes out the window and is completely unnecessary. You know, any errors you're going to run into are so slight that they're barely even noticeable. And I certainly haven't noticed any issues doing it this way for over a year. So don't worry about, you know, developer starters and season solutions and all these kind of nonsense. Just stick with the stock solution, stick with the stock times and replenish 70 mils after every roll developed. One downside of this replenishment process is that over time, crud does have a tendency to build up in a working stock solution. So things like hair and dust and grit and just muck in general that was attached to the film, it was in the tanks after you wash it, all ends up building up in the working stock. So to fix this, we do have to filter it every so often. I generally do it after every, you know, 15 to 20-ish rolls. But to fix this, all we need to do is filter the solution. So when I'm doing it, I filter it two times through coffee filters. And then I do a 20 mil replenishment just to replace any solution that was lost through the filtering process. So you do need to maintain your working stock solution to keep it kind of clear. As for other things that can end up in there from the film, you know, bromates and other chemical traces, Xtol is actually designed to handle that. So you don't need to worry about those building up in the actual stock solution. Let's do a little cost breakdown compared to the stock solution and one plus one dilutions to figure out how much money this will actually save us in time. So for this example, I'm gonna make the assumption that you're developing all 35 millimeter film and you're always going to use the inversion method in a 250 mil tank. So for the first method, which is the stock method, we need to use 250 mil stock every time. So that means we take 5,000, divide it by 250, which gives us 20 runs. So that means the five liters of stock solution we made up will develop 20 rolls of film. Now, Xtol here in Europe is a little bit more expensive than the States at 16 euros for this five liter bag. So if we take 16 euros, divide by 20, that means per roll, this costs about 80 cent a roll to develop. Now, if we're doing the one plus one method, obviously this will develop exactly twice as many rolls since you're diluting it down by half. So that means we need to take our 16 euro per bag and divide by 40, which gives us 40 cent a roll in the one plus one method. Now, to figure out the replenisher method, it's a little more complicated. And that is because we've extracted one liter of working solution from our original five liters. So what we need to take is our four liters here, which is 4,000 mil. And then we're going to divide that by 70 because every roll needs 70 mil of developer to replenish. So divide it by 70. And that gives us 57 rolls of film developed. Then we take our 16 euros, divide by 57. And that gives us for a replenishing method, a grand total of 28 cent per roll. And this means that the best developer, in my opinion, is also the cheapest method per roll. But it gets even better than that, because let's say a year goes by, you've consumed your entire four liters of replenisher, and you go out and buy a second bag of Xtol. Now, you already have your working solution here. So that means this five liter bag becomes all replenisher, and you can just keep using this one liter of solution basically forever. So that means we can actually divide 5,000 by 70 for my second bag of Xtol, and that brings the number of rolls that this bag can develop up to 71. And then from that, we can divide 16 by 71, and that gives us 22 cent a roll. So it's not a huge drop in price, but it still makes it very cheap per roll to develop your film in Xtol. Now, if you're wondering why I think Xtol is one of the best film developers, you can check out this video I've already done 
where I compare Rodinal, HC110 and Extol in both inversion and rotation development in my Jobo. And the results are pretty crazy, but you should definitely check out that video if you want to see why you should develop an Extol. I think that's enough praise for Extol for one video. I'll see you next time.